Hey everyone, I have not gone live in a while, so welcome to my live. You guys, um, yesterday I posted my back office. You guys know Robert is a fan of that for sure. He's like documentation beats conversation, so I'm like, you know what, I'll just share my back office because I know people, people are curious, like what does it look like when you hit the top, you know, what does... What is possible? I think that's what most people want to know. What's possible? So I shared my back office. A lot of people are like, how big is your team? And I had no idea, honestly, until yesterday. I am not the kind of person that stalks my back office, although I encourage you to be. Um, I, I have no idea, honestly. Um, I have like a perfectly balanced business, and, I, and, it, and it just happened that way. So I'm going to share with you guys some things that I learned along the way. So I joined My Daily Choice in 2014 as an affiliate. Uh, Josh and I were not really dating. I mean, we were kind of just like starting to date and um, brand new boyfriend and girlfriend. I had an upline. I had a few uplines actually. They all didn't last the test of time. So I just kind of my position just compressed until I hit the top because other people quit so um, timing for sure is an important thing so I have 10 things that I was I quickly just wrote down and I want to share with you guys to give you some hope and inspiration but before I get started I'm gonna just let you guys know the earnings disclaimer there's no guarantees regarding the income from the my daily choice hemp works opportunity the success or failure of each affiliate like in any other business depends on each affiliate skill set and personal effort earning levels for independent affiliates are examples and should not be construed as typical or average income levels achievements are dependent upon the individual affiliates business skills personal ambition time commitment activity and demographic factors okay so I'm not here to guarantee anything because I worked my ass off and I can't promise that you're going to work your ass off, um, but I am showing you what is possible. So um, I've been averaging between 250000 to 450000 on like when I got my big bonuses a month and that's as a super affiliate with my daily choice. Now we do have... Um, an earning disclosure sheet that you can see the average incomes per rank. If you're interested in that, I can post it in the comments after this video. But if you guys also have questions during this live, feel free to comment in the comments and I'll get back to you guys either after this call or if I can see them live, I'll answer them quickly here. Um, so <laughs> you guys, I've been in the network marketing industry for 12 years on and off. My first business was Quickstar when I was 18 years old. I, Turns out that was Amway and I didn't even know it. I was actually recruited by a friend that I met in band as a junior hire. <laughs> and I remember feeling so ruined after I went to that first meeting because I was 18, getting ready to go to college, getting ready to start my career and you know all that outside of high school. And here I went to this network marketing meeting where they're drawing circles on the board talking about Ray Kroc and the McDonald's franchise. And I'm thinking to myself, that makes a lot of sense actually and maybe I'll give this a shot and it didn't work for me because I was not developed as a person at the time I was just a crazy kid at the time uh, what I did instead was I got pregnant and then I got married well married then pregnant and um, started my life kind of off to a rough start and um, forgot about network marketing for a few years until I realized that military paychecks were not that much and I needed something to supplement this income. I joined the military in 2008. I, um, you know, that also brought me back into thinking like maybe I should try network marketing again. And it wasn't until 2012 that I really started getting serious about it. I joined a couple companies. I got terminated a few times. What a rocky road that was. Uh, I, if there was a rule that I didn't like, I found it right away um, for sure. So. I met Josh in 2014, a few months before we launched My Daily Choice, and I said, listen, I'm quitting network marketing, it's a scam, like there's no way that you can make money in this because my previous company before that was like, oh, we don't have a girl with short hair on stage yet, we can give you a rank, uh, and then you can go up there and talk in front of the masses and 
cheer them on. And I was like, well, how does that duplicate? I can't go up on stage and tell people they can do it too if I know they can't because the company is rigged for the owners instead of the affiliates. So I told Josh, I'm done with network marketing. Um, and he said, what if I do it differently? And I said, maybe this can work if you do it differently because I can trust you, but I can't trust anyone else. So we got started with My Daily Choice November 2014, and I had three sprays to sell. And i um, going to be honest, I was very, very excited my first month. My first month, my first seven days, I earned almost $4,000 in commissions. And I was like, wow, this comp plan pays like way more than anything else I've ever seen out there. And I hit 25K rank my first month in business with my daily choice. And that gave me enough hope to know that this could work. Um, and I think that is one thing that's awesome about our business is we do pay you right away. So you do get that little spark of inspiration, like maybe this can work. So fast forwarding to 2017 with the launch of HempWorks. I uh, actually got sick in 2014 too, and I had struggled with my health for the next three years up until that point, until we got involved in the hemp business and the CBD oil business, and that drastically changed my life to the point where I did not even care about money anymore, that I just needed to get this product out to the masses, and I just like had this vision instantly, and I just ran with it, and I'm going to tell you some of the things that I did 90% of these or maybe even 100% of these things are psychological so if you're thinking there's no way that I can make what Jenna makes or Kristen and Travis or Judy and Barb and all these people that are hitting these top ranks then maybe this is for you because I was in your position before I was the person that talked shit to myself all day long and I had the worst inner roommate in my head um, like you wouldn't believe, you know? And so this is my steps. So this is how I went from broke to 10,000 a day online. Online, I didn't go to work, I didn't change my wardrobe because I went to a couple of events, that was it. Um, amazing, so this is all online. Okay, so number one, the first thing that I did, and there are 10 things that I did that I can really grasp, that I feel like I could teach to you. The first thing that I did was I rewired my brain so if you're taking notes, write it down, rewire my brain. And the reason I say that is because when we are born as little babies, we go home to our families and then pretty much immediately our families begin to indoctrinate us with what is fact, what is real around us. For instance, they tell you right away when you're little, they go, this is a water bottle. And then you learn to just label things. This is a cell phone, this is a card, like a, you know, this is a lighter. Don't ask me why I have a lighter. Um, you should know why. Um, but they tell you what everything is, right? This is a bird, this is a window, this is a light, lamp, whatever. And they what it is. And we start believing what our parents are teaching us or what we're learning in school. They tell us what the letters look like and how to read and all this stuff. And so we just accept it as face value that these are facts. But just imagine if you lived your life and nobody told you anything, then you would be living in a world full of magic. Uh, if you saw flying birds throughout the air, if you saw airplanes and you didn't know what they were, everything would be magical. So I decided that I was going to rewire my brain and pretty much dump everything that I ever learned into the trash can. I decided that there was no limit. There was nothing that I knew for sure and that anything was possible, anything like anything, um, you know, and I, I went from being raised in a Christian church, uh, and then I went to the extreme of becoming an atheist, and so at this point in my life, I was just like, I'm throwing it all away, and I'm just going to see what comes out of this. I'm going to rewire my brain. So my suggestion to you is to take your brain off of the default setting that you've been programmed with, okay? There's a reason why your TV is called TV programming. There's a reason why it's called entertainment entrapment okay um, I've decided to rewire my brain so that's the first thing you have to do is throw everything that you know to be true away in the trash can put it in the trash can stop listening to people that are not giving you good advice don't read books that are bringing you down don't watch TV shows that are toxic 
that are giving you bad energy. Um, I don't watch scary movies because they stress me out. And uh, as <laughs> my friend Nadia Melton has said about scary movies, she says, I don't pay for stress. And I agree with that. I don't pay for stress. Um, so you have to really begin to challenge yourself. And I feel like this is the step that most people get hung up on because they're so sure of the facts in which they live their life. Well, I got the job, I got the degree, I got the husband, I got the kids, I got the house, I did it all right, so why am I unsatisfied, why am I unfulfilled, and why can't I achieve my true heart's desire? And that's because you've kept yourself down, right? When your kids, you know, my sons, one of them wants to be a magician, one last year wanted to be a construction worker, and now he's just like, whatever, I don't know yet. And I feel like instead of... Be living in a world where people are embracing your wild ideas. We live in a world and a society that tells you you're crazy for thinking differently. So the first thing is rewire your brain. Open yourself to all possibility completely. So that's number one. Number two, I started saying yes to uncomfortable situations. Okay, um, so I started saying yes. So if you guys have seen, I think it's called Yes Man with... Jim Carrey it's a movie and he goes around and he starts living his life where he just says yes to everything instead of no because I had realized I had been in a place in my life where I was saying no to everything hey do you want to go out with friends no hey do you want to do this no hey do you want to go here no like I used to be the person that said no all the time and what I realized was I was actually castrating my opportunities by saying no to everything so one day I met uh, Jackie Stewart, um, and she invited me to her house, and I said yes. And normally I would have said no, but I said yes, and she was there, and her sister Judy Stallings walked in, and she became, besides myself, the first person to hit Super Affiliate in nine months. So if I had said no to that, to that meet and greet, which I normally would have said no to because I'm like weird and I'm antisocial and I can do online, but offline, I, people have met me and they're like, you're exactly the same, pretty much the exact same, but um, it requires a lot of energy to meet new people and I'm very like introverted in that regard. I'm very protective of my energy and what I'm allowing into my consciousness. So I became the person that said no. And so number two was I started saying yes to uncomfortable situations. And I don't mean like now you should say yes to go hanging out in a back alley at a bar. No, those are obviously still no's for me. Um, and they should be no's for you too. But start saying yes to opportunities. Don't find an excuse to not be able to take new opportunities because if you don't take these opportunities, these are the universe's deliveries for you. Like if you are saying this is what I want to achieve and you have an opportunity and you turn it down, how can that vision be fulfilled if you're always saying no to the things that are trying to force you into where you want to be? So number two is I start saying yes. Number three, I thought outside of the box and I got creative. Um, it's super easy to get creative in this business. Honestly, I have some people that are new that are like, I just can't get anyone and to, to, to bite. I can't get anyone to sign up on my team. And I'm thinking, how is that even possible? Do you know the power of these products? Have you not experienced them yourself? Because, um, you know, for me, I became more of a product based preacher than an opportunity based preacher. And I started getting really creative with how I could help other people. I got really creative with um, who needed what I had to offer. So it was more than just building a list. It was literally racking my brain in and out and finding a way, finding a solution to everybody's everyday problems. I became the ultimate problem solver. Oh, you've got this going on in your life? Well, I have CBD for that. <laughs> you know, you've got this going on? Okay, I have something for that. And I started racking my brain thinking of, everybody's problems I started with my family first I wrote a list down and I was like my mom's got this my dad's got this <laughs> my brothers and sisters have this going on and I'm like everybody needs this stuff like if you're not in the CBD oil business and you're selling something else God bless you because uh, I can't imagine having to sell something else honestly I mean I just know that I know that I know that this is the product that is transforming the world so I started getting creative 
And I do think that sometimes we get into a rut where we believe like, I got to follow all the trainings, I got to go to all the seminars, I got to go to all these events and do all this stuff and take as many notes as I can. But we fail to open up our creative brain that is the instrument we need to use to get inspired to take things to the next level. Don't be afraid to do things a little differently that fit for your life, that fit for your, your business. And uh, you don't always have to take orders with, with duplication, okay? Duplication can work in many different ways, but get creative with how you can spin it so that it works for your life. Um, you know, I've got lots of friends that are in the horse industry and they're, you know, equestrians and that kind of thing. And I'm like, tailor the business to you. Tailor it to your interest groups because there's other people in those interest groups that you can connect with and have a bond with immediately so that that transition into the business conversation is natural versus trying to just shoot out there looking for everybody. So get creative. Think outside the box. Don't be afraid and don't criticize yourself with your wild ideas because hemp works was a crazy idea for me and it worked. So don't be afraid to challenge yourself to think differently. Number four was uh, my bad days weren't final. So we've had bad days, I can tell you. Um, if you've been in our business since 2014, you've seen the bad days, you've seen what our shipping was before we got our own facility and our own warehouse and fulfillment. Okay, we've had bad days. And I've decided that my bad days were not gonna be final, they were just gonna be bad days. And I was gonna just leave it at that. Um, I didn't quit because I knew that um, if I quit, I was going to let the world down. That's really how I felt. I felt like I'm not just quitting on myself, I'm quitting on all the potential people that I could help in the world. And I think once you take that focus off of yourself, it makes it a lot easier to stay because you realize that you're on a rescue mission to go rescue a lot of people. And if you are not in that position and that mindset of being able to help people, then you are going to have a hard time. You are going to quit probably because it's just self-centered kind of agenda where you're trying to get rich and that just that doesn't work. And that actually is another step, so I'm not going to go too far into that. But don't let your bad days be final. That's my biggest advice for step four. Number five is I started spending money. This is crazy, right? Like um, people think, okay, you're making this money every month. Sure, your, your savings account must be stacked. Right, but back then it wasn't, and I remember my first like semi big paycheck was fifteen hundred dollars. After months of my volume dropping uh, and my paycheck dropping, um, and I remember I got fifteen hundred dollars, and it was just starting to build up again. This is right after HempWorks launched, and I spent the whole thing. <laughs> I spent the entire check on a Louis Vuitton bag and completely just was out of my comfort zone. I was not the kind of person that would just go shop like that. I was the sensible kind of person, like I could put it towards this, 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 whatever. But at that time, I wanted to feel like what it felt like to be a wealthy person. And so I shifted my mindset that I'm going to, instead of hoarding all this money that's now starting to roll in, I'm going to give it away. I started tipping people way more than I never did before. I started buying gifts for people that I never did before. And um, even today, my niece turned 16 years old. I'm going to buy her a car. Because why? Why not? I can, I can do it. So I'm not like a money hoarder. You know, I decided to be free with my money. And I do believe that is because money is energy, because everything is energy. And energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transferred. And that is a quote by Albert Einstein, so I do believe that to be true. Um, but you guys, money is a flow of energy. And if you're just watching your money stack up in your bank account or maybe decline in your bank account, whatever way you're dealing with right now, you don't want it to just sit there and become stagnant because then it's not doing anything for the world. It's not doing anything for anyone else. It's not doing anything for you just by staring at it. So I challenged myself to buy things and I set up my bank account so that I had one account just for spending. I had one that was for saving or taxes and I had one that was just for operational expenses. So Josh actually taught me this and if you guys wanna see his success, you can go ask him. So his is like a lot more than mine so I trust that his advice is good advice. So 
he actually told me this when I was broke and he said, you need to set up three bank accounts, spending, savings or taxes, and then also operating. And I was like, what am I going to put in these bank accounts? Five bucks each? Like I can't even open the bank account. And he's like, you're going to set those bank accounts up, but just get them ready because you need to have this mindset that it's going to be flowing to you. And you got Okay, so my internet's bad, so I am now in my personal hotspot on my phone, so let's hopefully that works. Um, if you're on my other one, please hang up that one and now join this one because otherwise you're only going to see half the video. So I was on step number five. I was talking about spending money and how I realized that money was a flow. And you guys, when Josh and I were first dating, we were so anti-committal that we lived in the same apartment building in separate apartments and we'd go get our mail together and I would open my mailbox and I would get bills in the mail and then he would open his and he would get checks in the mail and he's like money's energy and I'm like that is so gross that you can just create money like that and <laughs> he's like it's just energy it's just a mindset it's just the way you think about it and I realized like man that's true um, because I used to be very scared about money and being scared about money, like scared to swipe your card or scared if you're going to have enough money at the end of the month, um, that's fear, right? And fear is not real. Fear is just an illusion. It's just something that's in your head. And if you can just get rid of that, then you can focus on the lesson at hand, which is to be free with your money and just expect and trust in karma. Because I know, like, I'm going to help my friend pay for her wedding. I'm going to buy my niece a car. I'm going to I pay my sister's dead off, my my family is like hooked up because I know that it's energy. Money is just energy and whatever you put out there is going to come back to you. Always. It always comes back to you. If you're putting like saving, hoarding, fearful money out there into the universe, that's what's going to happen. Lack. You're going to get more lack. So when you become less stingy and greedy with your money, uh, you actually attract way more of it. So that was a big lesson that I had to learn and really rewire my brain on. So that was number five. Number six is I stopped listening to broke people. And that means myself. I was a broke person. I stopped listening to myself. <laughs> you guys. Stop listening to that little roommate that was like, you can't afford that. Like, what are you talking about? You grew up on a dirt road, Jen. You can't have these nice things. Um, don't listen to broke people. So if you are like most people and you're surrounded by people that are just average income, you're going to be tempted to take their advice because even if they're just a little bit ahead of you and maybe they have, you know, more of their house paid off than you do or whatever, maybe they have a little bit of a nicer car than you do, you're going to be tempted like I'm going to follow them. But my challenge for you is to only listen to people that are exactly where you want to be. And this goes back to what Robert says all the time, find a mentor that has documentation. I can prove my documentation. I can show you the times where I had massive paychecks, and I can also show you the same time that I've had zeros in my back office. I mean, I have 13, 14 pages full of earnings because I've been here since 2014. And I had a guy that was like, I want to join you, but, like, you know, you're Jenna, so I know you're – you're the wife of Josh, so that's obviously why you're successful. So, And I said, get on your Skype right now, and I'm going to walk you through every single page in my back office, and then you can determine if I achieve this myself or not. And <laughs> so I realized that, like, like, you just can't take anyone's advice. That's not where you're at. You have to have the documentation. You have to have the proof. You have to be in – you have to listen to people that have already done what you've done because they already know the roadmap. And I'm not tooting my own horn here, although I have achieved something dramatic and drastic here and substantial in my life, but I've followed the leader, you know, and that's what network marketing is. I followed Josh before I had my own story to tell. I knew Josh's story like the back of my hand. I had to edify him and not talk about myself at all. Every single phone call I got on in the beginning of our business was all about Josh. I was like, you know, he, he had his first million by 20. One years old, he built a team of 56,000 people around the world. He was the top income earner for several years in a row. They had to create new ranks for him. As an affiliate, I told his story because I didn't have one yet, and I wasn't afraid of that. I decided to just follow people that did what I wanted to do, and I happened to live with him. So that's, like, even more convenient. But um, 
my point is to pick out your mentors and choose them wisely. Now, a lot of times in my life, I didn't have mentorship. I didn't even have parents at some point during my life. So I read a lot of books. I read about one book a week. I'm like an avid book reader, and there was a time in my life where I just didn't after college and high school. I was just like, what do I need to read for? Like a TV and radio. Um, but read. Read books. And study what other people are doing that are getting the results that you want. Because if it's been done before, that means it can be done again. It means it is possible. Number seven, I, this is random, but totally a part of my life. Number seven was I took a holistic approach to overall wellness. And I mean financial wellness, physical wellness, mental wellness, spiritual wellness. Okay, All of that together had to come full circle for me. For sure, because like I couldn't just have a piece of my life struggling and have another piece of it like super excelling. I don't think it works that way. For me, I had to get serious about my health. I had to get serious about my meditation and yoga and like getting in alignment with my true desires and listening to my spirit versus my ego. And you want to know the difference between those two? Your ego is what is the doubt, the doubting voice in your head, and your spirit is the one that knows that it's just the, the presence within you, that the observer behind the, the mask. Okay? You're the observer. You're not the person that you think you are. So I had to take this holistic approach to wellness, and I realized that as I went on a journey, more and more people wanted to follow me because they saw that I was changing my life. They saw where I started from, and they saw where I was going in the middle of it. And there's some people that are that have waited till now. They waited till I hit this level before they've taken me seriously. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. But if you're going on a journey, let's say you've got a few pounds to lose. I'm not judging, but let's just say that's an easy journey for you to go on that you can document and put on the Internet and put on Facebook and say, listen, I'm operation getting myself healthy so that my brain, my mind, my body, and everything can be holistically well. Um, if you go on these journeys, it inspires so many people because you are taking the steps where they are afraid to take. That's an easy way to build your Facebook following. That's an easy way to get people to become engaged with your story. So for me, I had to go on my own journey and it was mostly a spiritual journey for me. I didn't have much weight to lose, so I didn't have that opportunity. I think that would have been easier because I could have just showed you before and after pictures. But <laughs> you have to see my videos, I guess, from back then till, to, till now. I made drastic personal development changes, and that was the journey that I went on. So I encourage you guys to go on a journey and document it. Change something in your life and put the pieces in your entire life together, not just a part of it. Don't say I'm going to be rich and then, and then I'm going to worry about eating right or whatever. Like do it all together. Make it a, a, a collective holistic thing because that's going to take you to higher results much faster because you're going to have the respect and the inspiration of people that are following you. Number eight, I led with my heart and my passion. Instead of my skills and, you know, all my background that I learned, you know, I learned how to do call center stuff. I worked in a call center. I could smash any sales call probably. Um, you know, like I had skills, but I didn't have heart. And I think that was the biggest thing that was missing from my organization up until I started with HempWorks because my passion was so great for these products because of what changed in my life that I led with that. I led with my heart first. And I realized that it wasn't all about me, you know, and it wasn't just about my results. And I think if you can do that, I always teach people, even in the corporate office, as we're hiring new people, I say <laughs> hire people or recruit people with heart and then teach them the skills. Don't go for the people that have all the skills with no heart. Like, I don't care how much money somebody's making in the industry. I don't care if they're a seven or eight figure earner. I'm not going to talk to them. I'm not going to hang out with them at events. I'm not going to approach them if I think they're assholes. I'm just not. Like, I'm, if their ego is bigger than the whole room, I'm avoiding them. Like, I have no interest in dealing with people that are too good for everybody else. That is one of the biggest turnoffs I found in network marketing that I decided I would lead the example and change that because I hated that. I hated that people had to feel like the people on top were celebrities and then everybody else was just like these little peasants. Like, I hated that so much. So... I decided I was going to lead with my heart and I was going to be casual and I was going to keep it real because 
that's what I felt the industry needed. I just, I, I felt like the shift had to happen from within first before that we could change the rest of the world. So I encourage you to lead with your heart and not your skills and not your rank and not your accolades and not whatever car you drive and whatever house you live in. No one gives you crap about any of that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great I make $10,000 a day online. Good for me. But how I did it was by leading with my heart, by becoming a heart-focused person. I had to let my guard down. You know, I used to be so tough. You know, I used to be, like, people call me the ninja and all this stuff. And I used to have this, like, shield around me all times because I'd been hurt so many times. And I just kept this shield over my heart and I never let anybody in because I didn't want to get hurt I didn't want to be vulnerable and my biggest thing I can teach you guys is to keep your heart open because if your heart is not open then you're gonna have a really hard time connecting with people on a real level and I learned that because of Josh because he's the first person that I really fell in love with and he inspired me to change who I was. In fact, I, I even decided to get therapy at one point. I went into the shrink's office and I was like, apparently there's something wrong with me because all my relationships are falling apart. I'm broke and I'm going bankrupt and nothing is working right in my life. So apparently I'm the common denominator and it's me. So what's wrong with me and how can I fix it? Because I'm tired of hurting other people in my life because I'm not allowing them to enter into my space. And I had to really do a lot of self-reflection on that. And I had to really put in the work. And this is the hardest work I think anybody can do in their lifetime is to conquer their lifetime of past, past trauma, their ancestral trauma that's been handed down from parent to parent or parent to child and then so on. I think that's the biggest thing that we can learn to do is learn to leave our heart open and to keep it open all the time and not to be afraid to become vulnerable or it being exposed, I think it's it's a, a perfectly honorable thing to keep your heart open and let people experience the, the, the realness in you so that they can be inspired to open their hearts as well. Lead with your passion. Lead with your heart. That is probably the most important thing that I've said and out of all of this that I feel is extremely lacking in our world and in our industry so if we could just get a couple of you guys to get on board with that I think it would do a lot of good number nine this kind of goes with number eight but number nine is I stopped thinking about myself I became selfless I used to be a really selfish person I used to not care about anyone or I thought I did but I would not show them accordingly I uh, just didn't have love in my life you know, and because of that, I was only focused on myself and my own problems, my own drama, my own whatever world was happening with me, me, me. And I was a narcissist, like, like flat out, if you Google narcissist, that was me. I was a narcissist. And you know how hard it is to recover from narcissism? <laughs> it's really hard because it takes a lot to admit it to yourself that you've been a shitty human to other people. So I stopped thinking about myself. You know, people that are like, I'm just so like depressed and like anxious. And I'm like, this is my belief and I don't know if it's true or not, but this is why I believe you guys that people that are depressed and I've been there, I've been there, I've been suicidal, I've been on the side of the road, like questioning if I ever wanna go back into my house or if I wanna run away. I've been in the worst situations you can think of. So I'm speaking from experience here, not judging anybody that's going through a hard time but for me personally depression for me was I'm so focused on myself and my own pain that I literally can't care about anyone else around me that's what depression was for me and because of that I decided I was going to stop thinking about myself what took me out of the place of being sad and depressed or whatever what took me out of that was what can I do to give somebody else today how can I make somebody else's day better I started doing nicer things for my husband, my kids. I started putting love into other people. And when I took the focus off of myself and what was me and my problems, um, everything began to shift and everything began to return to me. That love I was putting out there came back tenfold. And again, you guys, the wheel of karma is completely true. At least it has been for me. So if you're experiencing lack of results, ask yourself, what are you putting out there? You have to become the person you wish to attract. You have to become the person you wish to attract. If you're acting crazy on social media, if you're 
doing stupid things in your life, that's what you're going to attract back. You have to become the person you wish to attract. There's no other better way to say it than you have to lead yourself on your own journey before you can lead anybody else. Because nobody's going to be inspired by somebody that's just pretending. We can see right through it. I mean, we see fake leaders all the time doing all this crazy stuff online, and it's like, great. What have you done for somebody else? So number nine is don't think about yourself so much. Think about how you can help somebody else and then be patient because that's going to be returned to you. It always happens every time, and it might take a while. You may have to give a lot because you may have a lot of bad karma. You have to clear from what you've taken from life. You may have to invest for a long time giving in before you can take out, but you have to make you have to make deposits into other people's lives before you can take withdrawals. And lastly, number 10, this one is probably going to be one that blows your mind the most, which is why it's number 10. I realized what was illusionary in my life and what was real. I realized what was fake and what was real. What was fake was fear, doubt, excuses, depression. That was fake for me. Bipolar, they call me bipolar at the doctors, and I said, how do you know that? Is there a scan or something you do, or you just ask me a few questions and determine that? Yeah, so I had to decide what was real. I had to decide what I was going to reject out of my consciousness and what I was going to accept. And this is going to sound crazy, but you guys, literally on the plane, on the way to the cruise, on to Miami, there was clouds in the air, and the, the pilot got on the speaker and said, uh, we're gonna ha we're in a holding pattern for an hour, <laughs> and we're gonna be a delayed flight because the weather is so bad we can't land. And I heard that, and I said I reject that. I don't want that reality, so I'm not gonna even focus on that because most people would be sitting there and go, "Oh, great, another hour." Like you know, that's what most people would think. But I didn't do that. I just said it's just weather. I can change the weather. You know, I can change my point of reference. I can change my point of consciousness. So, okay, that's his version of reality. That's the information he's getting. But I reject that, and I'm going to have clear weather. We're going to land, and we're going to have a great trip. You guys, the whole – I almost didn't go to this cruise because the weather was thunderstorms every single day, and then there was, like, hurricanes. And I was like, why are we going on a cruise right now? This is crazy. And it literally every single day was thunderstorm and rain. And I, and I decided that it, I'm going to fix the weather. <laughs> and it was funny. I was telling our team this on the cruise. And they're like, we did the same thing. I'm like, you guys, we brought the weather. But um, it ended up being sunshine every single day, sprinkled like for a second, and that was it. So you can reject whatever reality you don't want to be a part of. If you don't like something in your life, don't accept it as real. Because the moment you accept that as real, that's it. It becomes real. Your fear is the most powerfully, energetically charged emotion that you can have. But guess what else is the most powerfully charged emotion that you can have? Love. Love is the opposite. Okay, so don't accept the things that you don't want in your life. You may be sitting in a studio apartment. You can barely afford rent. You may be struggling right now, but that's the reality you can reject. You can reject that. You can say no. I am not going to continue this way, and this is a temporary holding pattern until I get to my next destination. This is not my final destination, and I'm not finished doing what I have to do here on Earth. And whatever I'm going to achieve is already on the way. Like, I imagine myself, when I am manifesting something in my life, I imagine it as easy as I'm ordering something on Amazon. They're shipping so good, you can depend on it, right? And when you order something, you know it's showing up in two to three days. And you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to, like, crazily check the tracking. Like, you know, it's going to show up in two or three days stress-free. So I imagine the things in my life, I imagine it just like I am placing an order on Amazon and it's just on the way. Like, no, like, who is calling Amazon on the first day and saying, where's my package? <laughs> you know? Like, where's my package? Oh, my God, it's not here. I'm going to start freaking out. Did it get lost on the first day? No. It's in transit. Your, your blessings are in transit. Whatever you've put out there that you want to achieve, whatever your vision is, is on the way. As long as you become a vibrational match to whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Okay, now if you're saying, I want to make $10,000 a month, like, you know, Jenna or Day or whatever, and then your vibration is low to the point where 
they don't even make sense together. Like, I'm going to make this much money, but I'm going to treat my family bad, and I'm going to bring bad energy into my home. That's, you're never going to get there, okay? So you have to have your vision and what you're trying to attract in your life, and you have to raise your vibration to match it. And when you match it, it's as simple as ordering something on Amazon and you can manifest something instantly. You can manifest it instantly. I've been known, and I am crazy to say this, inside of a hotel casino, but Josh is, can verify this. I will go play poker and I will tell him what cards are coming out next. And it's not because I'm a psychic. It's because I'm manifesting it. I'm creating it in real time. And you can get so good at creating, it becomes extremely fun. Um, so... Number 10 was realize what is real in your life or what you want to be real in your life and realize what is fake. Because a lot of this is gonna be completely opposite. Magic is real and your words are magic. And I, when people come to me and they go, I have all these health issues, I have all this financial trouble, like I go, whoa, why are you saying any of that? Those are your, your words are your magic spells. Imagine that. Imagine that your vocabulary, your language, and everything that you're feeling and vibrating on a daily basis, whatever is coming out, is what you are creating. You're creating based on what you're saying. So if you're saying all of your problems, guess what? You're on a repeat cycle of your problems. It's really that simple. Start speaking your magic spells of the words that you want to create. I am making $10,000 a day. I'm making $10,000 a minute, a month, a year. I don't know whatever your goals are, but start speaking life into your magic spells, into your words, into your vocabulary, into your every single day. And be very, very paranoid about saying anything you don't want to create because you're creating it whether you like it or not. The universe has no biases. It doesn't care if you want to see greatness or problems in your life. It doesn't care. It's, it's unbiased. We live in a world and a planet of duality. There's good and evil, right? And you can create in any way you want, depending on what you are speaking and believing and feeling. More importantly, your emotions are your sensors. It's your, it's your, it tells you if you're on the right path. If you're feeling really horrible and you're just negative and all this, then you know you need to change your thoughts because your, your thoughts will change your feelings and your feelings will change your entire reality. So those are the steps, you guys. And if you missed them, one is I rewired my brain. I took it off default setting. Two, I started saying yes to uncomfortable situations. Three, I thought outside the box. I got creative. Number four, my bad days weren't final. I didn't quit. I didn't quit. Even though it was, like, horrible, I kept my mind on my vision and realized I was just waiting for my package to arrive. That's it. I was in transit. That was it. So the, my bad days were not final. Number five, I started spending money. More than saving, I started spending it because I realized money is energy and it was an exchange. It was karma. It was what I put out comes back. Number six, I stopped listening to broke people. I started following people that had what I wanted. I started taking their advice, whether I agreed with it or not. I was coachable. I was trainable. I decided I don't know anything and I'm going to learn from scratch. Number seven, I took a holistic approach to wellness in all areas of my life. Number eight, I led with my heart and my passion. Number nine, I stopped thinking about myself. I started thinking about other people. And number 10, I realized what was illusionary and what was real in my life. And I began to create consciously because of that. Thank you guys for hopping on. I have a business meeting in 15 minutes, so I do have to go. But thank you guys so much. Please share this video if you think somebody else can benefit from that. Share the other one too. I wish I could combine the two together, but I can't. Fortunately, I had internet issues, but thank you guys. I am grateful for each and every one of you guys. And just know that you have the ability to succeed. You have the same ability that I had back then. So don't give up on yourself and dive in to retraining the way your thoughts are because literally that's 99% of success is all right here. I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye-bye.